I am going to talk on spine surgery under spinal anesthesia. It's this technique is not a new to us, but use of this technique is not widely accepted for the spine surgery. Spinal anesthesia is introduced by German surgeon August Bayer in the eighteen ninety eight by the first spinal puncture for the lower limb surgery. But though this technique is being tried for the spine surgery. Early date back to nineteen sixty, but its use is not increased because general anesthesia is widely accepted by the patient due to comfort. Surgery can be easily extended under the general anesthesia, so surgeon is comfortable with the general anesthesia technique. And anesthesiologist is very comfortable with secured airway in prone position, which is possible with the general anesthesia. That's why general anesthesia is most commonly preferred over spinal anesthesia for the spine surgery. But since COVID pandemic and the ERAS protocol, when the regional anesthesia become a important component of the ERAS, use of this technique is increasing. What are the our objectives? Is neural anesthesia possible for spine surgery? What are the indications for the spine surgery? Common surgical procedures under spinal anesthesia. Advantages of the spinal anesthesia over general anesthesia. Routine anesthetic consideration while performing this surgery under spinal anesthesia. What are the different techniques to perform this subarachnoid block? What are the limitations of spinal anesthesia and the facial pain blocks? I included this topic in this because I am routinely using these blocks along with the spinal anesthesia. So there are so many articles using this technique, or and also comparing this technique with the general anesthesia in normal patients as well in high risk patient and old age patient. And the conclusion of all these articles is. Yes, neuroaxial anesthesia is possible for lower thoracic and lumbar spine surgery, and it is a very safe and good alternative to general anesthesia. So, most common indications for the spine surgery are neurologic dysfunction mainly because of the cord compression, structural instability, pathologic lesions mainly tumor and infection, spot spine which is the main cause, then deformity which is mainly the spondylolisthesis, and the pain. That is discogenic or facerogenic, which is the most common indication for the lumbar spine surgery. Common surgical procedures performed over the spine under the spinal anesthesia are mainly the laminectomy, discectomy, transforaminal lumbar interbody fusions, multiple level spinal fusion surgery, endoscopic spine surgeries. So, main advantage of the spinal anesthesia over general anesthesia is the patient assists to safe opioid free pain relief which is mainly happened because of the preemptive effect of this spinal anesthesia by inhibiting the afferent nociceptive pathway. At the same time, addition of the adjoints prolong the duration of post-operative analgesia, which ultimately results in decreased opioid consumption in the post-operative period. Other main advantages of this spinal anesthesia are the lack of air airway instrumentation, which is the always risk in general anesthesia. Hypotensive anesthesia with the stable hemodynamics is the main requirement for the spine surgeries to avoid the blood loss. Also, there are less chances of post-operative nausea vomiting, which is there with the general anesthesia because of the use of many drugs and also with uh, use of the nitrous oxide. Spine anesthesia should the reduce blood loss mainly because of the decrease in the preload due to vasodilatation and at the same time, lower intrathoracic pressure due to spontaneous breathing patient is there, which is not the case with the general anesthesia. And positive pressure, positive pressure ventilation results in increased intrathoracic pressure, which transmitted that pressure, which uh, transmitted to the epidural veins and resulting in excessive bleeding, which interferes with the surgical fields. Local anesthetic enhances the fibrinolytic activity and attenuates the platelet activity, which results in the reduction in the thromboembolic phenomenon. Ability of the cell position during the surgery reduces the complications associated with the prone positioning which is the major, one of the major advantages of the spinal anesthesia. So, which results in avoiding many complications associated with the prone positioning, mainly the facial injuries, nerve injuries, post-operative visual loss, which is a rarer complication seen with the spine surgery in prone position and many other. According to the American Society of Anesthesiologists, post-operative visual loss registry, the most common cause of Post operative visual loss in spine procedure are mainly the anterior ischemic neuropathy and the posterior ischemic, posterior ischemic optic neuropathy. So, there is overall decreased incidence in the ischemic optic neuropathy compared to general anesthesia. 
Also, there is a decreased incidence of post-operative delirium, which is almost 24% in elderly patients seen with the spine surgery. Also, there is a less chance of post-dural post puncture headache compared to other surgeries done under the spinal anesthesia as local inflammatory response results in early scarring and which avoids the PDPH. So, all the circulatory, respiratory, analgesic benefits helps in enhanced recovery after the surgery, so which results in shorter hospital stay and reduced overall health care cost. So, routine anesthetic considerations are mainly the routine preoperative assessment to rule out the contraindications for the spinal anesthesia associated and also at the same time document the comorbidities. Proper counseling of the patient regarding anesthesia technique and surgical procedure is must to avoid the unnecessary complications and to make this technique very successful. All routine investigation must be performed, mainly the complete blood count, renal function test, electrocardiogram, chest x-ray, coagulation profile, liver function test, and special investigation includes the MRI spine, 2D echo, and pulmonary function test if the patient is having associated respiratory or cardiovascular problems. Duration of the procedure should not exceed more than 3 hours and the spine level should not increase more than the 3 levels. All routine monitors must be attached including electrocardiogram, non-invasive blood pressure and SpO2. Always take wide access bore IV cannula which helps in pre proper preloading with the ringer lactate or normal cell which avoids the unnecessary hypotension which is seen with the subarachnoid block. Always keep the patient supine for 10 to 15 minutes after the subarachnoid block toward the high spinal and related complications. Always achieve the adequate spinal anesthesia level which is the TCS dense to make this technique successful as the chest is uh, most common side effect basically uh, reported by the patient which is avoided if you achieve the adequate spinal level. All pressure points should be well padded as in general anesthesia toward the positioning complications. Always maintain the mean arterial pressure between the 55 to 60 mL of mercury or systolic blood pressure around the 90 mL of mercury. If, if it is low, then treat with the vasopressor. As the, to make this technique successful, most of the time we need the sedation with the benzodiazepines and opioid combination. I used to give this sedation after the one hour of the cerebral block. As till that time, the adequate level helps avoid the chest discomfort. What are the contraindication to spinal anesthesia while performing the spine surgery? Which is same as other uh, surgery also. Main absolute contraindications are the patient refusal, localized sepsis, allergy to drugs, plan for administration, patients inability to maintain the stillness during the needle puncture. Otherwise, it results in nerve injury and further complications and raise intracranial pressure. While the related contraindications are the infections, coagulopathy, previous spine surgery. But there are some reports where the patients with previous spine surgery, regional anesthesia can be used safely and surgery performed uneventfully. Even I have performed two such cases uneventfully. Neurologic diseases, myelopathy, which is the main contraindication, severe multi-level spinal stenosis, multiple sclerosis, arachnoiditis, and fixed cardiac output state. So these are the common tables and frames used for the prone positioning. Siemens positioning system, Andrews frame, Wilson frame, Jackson spine table, longitudinal bolster. Each has its own advantages and disadvantages. Perioperative visual loss is most commonly seen with the Wilson frame. The foam bolsters are commonly used the spine surgery while performing under the spinal anesthesia. As it is very comfortable to the patient, while giving the positioning over this booster, always keep the head little bit higher up compared to other body parts. Make the 90 degree angle at the elbow joint and the shoulder joint and avoid unnecessary hyper abduction at the shoulder joint. Keep the two boosters, one just below the chest and avoid the compression in the axilla which ultimately results in the brachial plexus injury. Another booster just below the pelvis. So, and... Uh, Position the patient such that the abdomen should be kept free. And uh, one more pillow is kept below the knee joint, which helps in to avoid unnecessary decrease in the venous return. Cerebral flow is the most common technique used for the lumbar surgery, which is given at a one or two level above the pathological level. Means if you are plan, if the surgeon is planning to, to uh, perform the surgery at the L3, L4 level, try to give the spinal at L1 level or T12 because dural leak 
with the spinal puncture the dural leak is there and which interferes with the surgeon that's why it's it's better to give the one to two level above the pathological level and this cerebral block is always associated with the early onset of action dose of the local anesthetic mainly depends upon the level of the spine surgery height weight and age of the patient and baricity of the local anesthetic which is given between the dose range of 2.5 to 3.6 ml if the you are using the hyperbolic solution and you are choosing the level at the l3 l4 level you can start with the 3.4 ml but if you are giving for the same l4 l5 surgery at the t12 level with hyperbaric solution 2.6 volume is also sufficient but with the isobaric solution you have to give larger volume to achieve the adequate block height most commonly used adjuvants with the subrenal technique are the opioids and the alpha 2 agonist in opioids fentanyl and buprenorphine and so fentanyl are commonly used and they mainly acts by dorsal horn of the spinal cord which is the main site of action and they are also transported to the supraspinal by bulk csf flow where they modulate the descending inhibitory pain pathways and a small amount of opioid diffuses into the epidural space with subsequent systemic absorption resulting in central immediate analgesia so opioids mainly acts by by these three mechanisms while alpha 2 agonist mainly acts by binding the post synaptic alpha 2 receptors which is a g protein coupled inhibitor receptors in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord resulting in the decreased nociceptive transmission i routinely using the buprenorphine in the dose range of 15 to 60 microgram if the patient is young 60 microgram is sufficient but if it is older around the 60 65 year it's better to give 30 microgram and none of the patient having any post operative sedation or respiratory depression or any other associated opioid complications like uh, nausea vomiting or pruritus in one or two patients i have seen that uh, mainly vomiting but when the dose is almost 60 microgram but the, with the clomidine and dexmedrinone the hypotension bradycardia are the main complications associated so i avoid these adjuvants but if required clomidine i used to give in the dose range of 30 to 40 microgram not more than that and i have not experienced with the dexmedrinone other adjuvants are mainly the benzodiazepines vasopressor neostigmine ketamine steroids but which is not used commonly so double needle technique is another innovative technique use of this technique is increasing after the invention of the isobaric local anesthetic and the segmental spinal anesthesia in this technique the subrenal block is given at the lumbar and thoracic level which helps in reduction of the local anesthetic doses at lumbar level which results in the no motor block in lower limb and nerve injury can be checked immediately after the surgery in the post operative period which ultimately results in early ambulations in this technique isobaric solution is given at the thoracic level in the dose range of 1 to 1.5 ml and hyperbolic solution is given at the lumbar level between the 1.8 to 2 ml which is given both these injection given simultaneously this technique has to be less hypotension compared to routine lumbar subrenal block and as this technique is skill technique which needs the expertise so what are the limitations of the spinal anesthesia as airway is not secured so always if you are new beginner always keep the stretcher by side of operating table because if adequate dose is not use of local anesthetic sometimes that uh, dose becomes high the high spinal level may happen and at that time you have to immediately make the patient supine to manage the further complications this technique is not useful technique for prolonged duration surgery and whenever there is expected major blood loss as the local anesthetic interfere with the intraoperative neuro monitoring it is not useful whenever there is a need of neuro monitoring which is the case with the myelopathy type of surgery there are very few rare complications associated with the rare spinal anesthesia mainly the cauda equina syndrome radiculopathy myelopathy but it is seen when the patient is having preexisting these complications there is always risk of thoracic sympathetic blockade leading to bradycardia and severe hypotension if the dose of local anesthesia becomes high two facial pain blocks commonly used with the general anesthesia to provide the very good post operative analgesia out of these the erector spinal plane block is most commonly used technique almost incidence being the 52% compared with the thoraco lumbar interfacial plane block incidence being 21% in erector spinal plane block as we all know that the local anesthetic blocks mainly the ventral and dorsal ramus of the spinal nerves and the drug is deposited between the transverse process and the erector spinal muscle while in thoraco lumbar interfacial plane block drug is deposited between the two muscles which is away from the midline between the longissimus muscle and in the iliocostalis muscle 
I am routinely using this electrospinal plane block with the 0.25% if you I can with additive of the dexamethasone 8 mg 15 ml on each side. And most of the time it provides very good excellent analysis. Injection is given if you are planning the surgery at L, from L3 either you give the block at the L3 level or L2 level. And it is a very simple block perform easily performed under the CM guidance. You have to just identify the tip of the transverse process and you hit with the spinal layer 23 gauge and deposit the drug. Also, this block can be given by the surgeon also at the end of the surgery before starting the skin closure. You see there is a backflow. Surgeon gives the block successfully. So, this is a 53-year-old female patient with the lumbar canal stenosis at L3, L4 and L4, L5 with diabetes mellitus posted for the spine decompression at the two levels. So, in this lady, I have given the hyperbaric solution 0.5% BPO Akin 3 ml with buprenorphine 30 microgram. Initially, her blood pressure is around 140 by 80. After the 12 minutes, I have checked her level and it is adequate and make her prone. So, level attitude is between the T5 T6. For making the prone, her BP is maintained between the 90 to 100 and at the end of the surgery, she is very comfortable throughout the surgery. Surgery lasts for almost two and a half hours. This is recently performed case with the isobaric BP again. I have used in only three patients. In this patient, I have given the 3 ml of isobaric leo BP again at the level of T11, T12. And the surgery lasts almost for 2 hours 45 minutes. And at the end of the surgery, after making the patient supine, he is able to move his limb immediately, which is not the case with the hyperbaric BP vacuum. But the drawback of this isobaric is, as the level recedes, patient is start complaining chest discomfort, which is not the case with the hyperbaric BP vacuum even after the 2 hour surgery. So, the, to conclude my talk, regional anesthesia is an underutilized but safe and effective alternative to general anesthesia for lower thoracic and lumbar spine surgeries. It helps in rapid recovery, early ambulations, laser opioid use in the post-operative period. It is a very cost-effective technique, easily used, easily performed. And the horizon for the regional anesthesia for spine surgery can be widened without causing the potential complications by proper patient selection and type of surgery and proper patient counseling. Thank you. These are my references.